Muy buenas tardes, eh, bienvenidos todos a Casa Árabe. Eh, advertirles que um, hay traducción al inglés y al español, hay traducción simultánea, si quieren coger eh, audífonos eh, los hay fuera de la sala. Eh, hoy tenemos el honor de tener una, vamos a, a poder oír un diálogo entre el secretario general de la Unión para el Mediterráneo, el señor eh, Nasser Kamel, eh, que lleva ya eh, desde, el mes, desde el pasado mes de junio en el, en el cargo, y um, el señor eh, Senén Florenza, eh, diplomático, embajador de España actualmente ante los organismos internacionales de Viena, eh, que aunque ahora ocupa este puesto ha dedicado el grueso de su carrera a, eh, al Mediterráneo. Eh. Eh, Senén Florenza eh, ha sido embajador en Túnez, ha sido director general del Instituto de Cooperación con el Mundo Árabe y el Mediterráneo en tiempos y hoy día, eh, como no ha querido dejar esa carencia que le unía al Mediterráneo, tiene un doble sombrero. Hoy está, no está aquí como embajador ante los organismos internacionales en Viena, sino en su condición de eh, presidente y exdirector general y presidente ejecutivo y expresidente ejecutivo del Instituto de Estudios del Mediterráneo de Barcelona, eh, que es un centro de referencia, como todos saben, en estudios del Mediterráneo. Es eh, por ello, precisamente por esta eh, condición de experto en temas mediterráneos, que le hemos pedido por que viniera a dialogar con el señor eh, Camel aquí. Eh, como saben, esto, eh, esta, este acto tiene lugar en el curso, en el marco del ciclo eh, diálogos que estamos, que, um, diálogos sobre sociedades abiertas. Que, esta, que Casa Árabe está llevando a cabo desde el pasado eh, mes de enero y que va a tener lugar entre enero y julio. Es, un, eh, es una actividad que se realiza en cooperación eh, con el eh, Ministerio de Asuntos Exteriores y codirigida por quienes les acompañan en esta mesa eh, y eh, por el señor Domènech Ruiz de Besa, en el gabinete del ministro. Eh, muchas gracias a todos por estar aquí hoy aquí, insisto, y sin más paso la palabra a don Senén Florenza, que llevará el que dirigirá la mesa. Muchas gracias. Senén, tienes la palabra. Muchas gracias, Pedro. Eh, permítanme unas palabras primero en español antes de pasar al diálogo, que lo haremos en inglés. Pero en, para decirle a Pedro y a algunos otros amigos aquí, hay hay sitios donde uno se siente bien y para mí Casa Árabe siempre me sucede esto. Es un sitio donde me siento bien. No sé, será la osmosis eh, que han pasado por aquí muchos amigos. Eh, eh, por tanto, en primer lugar, pues permítame que agradezca al director general de Casa Árabe, Pedro Martínez Avial, con quien además empezamos a trabajar en temas del mundo árabe eh, juntos a, hace muchos años, eh, en el 96, no hace tantos, pero ya son algunos, y, y desde entonces eh, él a intermitencias, yo casi ininterrumpidamente me he venido dedicando a temas del mundo árabe y mediterráneo, aunque ahora, como se ha hecho, pues eh, estoy en Viena como embajador ante los organismos de Naciones Unidas en Viena, pero he de confesar que es verdad que mi corazón sigue estando en el Mediterráneo. Incluso en Viena encuentro muchas cosas en el contexto de Naciones Unidas, con Unido, por ejemplo, en especial, que, que bueno, se refiere al Mediterráneo, y que conservo esa responsabilidad. Tengo la desgracia de tener afición a cosas que da mucho trabajo y ninguna remuneración. Ese es el caso de eh, presidente del Consejo, del Comité Ejecutivo del Instituto Europeo del Mediterráneo. Okay, so, but we are here today uh, for a, a very special occasion. Uh, we have with us uh, Ambassador uh, Kamel. And Nasser Kamel, first of all, is, is, is quite a special personality and a very, very, I think, important personality. He has uh, demonstrated that and he will continue to demonstrate it Uh, along the years in the future. Uh, but by, so by now, we, we are lucky enough to have him as Secretary General of the Union for the Mediterranean. Uh, <coughs> Ambassador Nasser Kamel uh, comes, although he's young, <laughs> fortunate enough for him, he's much younger yes. than me. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, but he's been Ambassador of Egypt to uh, Paris, he has been ambassador of Egypt to London, 
He has been uh, uh, under secretary in his own ministry in Cairo. He has been working in uh, Washington DC, in Lisbon, in Tunisia. We failed to be there at the same time. I was ambassador in Tunisia. This was said from 2000, 2004. You were just at the end of the 90s. He has been working in Brussels, in Paris. He, he had been studying political science uh, in Brussels, in, uh, at the, in Cairo, of course, at the beginning, at the École Nationale d'Administration, uh, Lena, uh, very well known in, in, in France. So he arrives to take this, this responsibility uh, as Secretary General of the Union for Mediterranean with the full strength of his better age and uh, with all this, this, this experience he, he, he has already uh, gathered uh, with him uh, and uh, we are happy with that because we think it is a great project. Uh, so uh, I will try to be your representative although I hope you will put some questions or many questions as well. And I am as well representing, when I put the questions, another community that's not here sitting among us. It's Euromesco. It's a, uh, I'm the president of the General Assembly of Euromesco. It's the network of 106 uh, research institutes from all over the European Union and the Arab world uh, devoted to euro mediterranean affairs. But in Spain, you know, Ambassador, uh, we were very much involved in the creation of the Barcelona process in '95. Uh, and that was, I think, very well known from everybody in, in Spain. Uh, now it has evolved into the Union for the Mediterranean. And I'm not sure that everybody eclipses what, what's the difference between the two and how one thing succeeds the other. So how would you uh, explain uh, this, this, how out of the process, uh, Barcelona process, you have now the Union for the Mediterranean. Uh, the objectives and change, or uh, how do you, you differentiate them? Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, allow me before I answer your very pertinent and important question to, to first uh, thank you, uh, my dear friends in Florence a great ambassador, uh, an authority on the Mediterranean. It, 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 it almost seems strange that uh, uh, the person who knows the most about the Mediterranean is asking someone who, mo who knows uh, much less than he does. But anyway, uh, 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 you're wearing the hat of, uh, of, 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 of the expert asking question, and I'm wearing the hat of, uh, of the Secretary General of the UFM. So thank you very much uh, for, for, for uh, honoring me uh, by being the one uh, uh, animating this, uh, this discussion. Uh, and also, uh, Pedro uh, Martinez, uh, a renowned uh, Spanish diplomat, and uh, heading this uh, magnificent uh, uh, edifice. I don't know how to call it. I mean, Casa, it's my first visit. And, uh, and I was telling my, uh, my Spanish colleague in the UFM, I mean, uh, 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 the, 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 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, being behind this, and I know that this series of, uh, of, 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 of talks and, and discussion are actually uh, uh, organized by uh, the Minister, and uh, you are his representative as far as, as this one and the others. So t I, 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 uh, I convey my thanks and appreciation to him. He actually was uh, personally uh, at, in the UFM last Monday, uh, visiting uh, the Union for the Mediterranean and, and having a very uh, successful uh, discussion, uh, co-organized actually, if I may say so, uh, between uh, myself and my dear friend and colleague, uh, Ambassador Sinan Florenza, in his capacity as uh, uh, president of EMED. Uh, which is the uh, center of, 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 of Euromesco uh, in its uh, understanding, deep understanding of the Mediterranean and the challenges that the, this region is facing. Uh, well, uh, 
To answer your question, uh, I think uh, uh, the short answer is that uh, 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 Barcelona and UFM uh, uh, are the answer to the same question. No? And they are the natural evolution, I mean, uh, 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 of, 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 of a structure to regulate, uh, to manage, to enhance relation between uh, the two shores uh, of the Mediterranean. Uh, uh, we all know that Barcelona process was uh, was launched in 1995 uh, under geostrategic uh, uh, state uh, that was extremely uh, optimistic. Uh, it was the end uh, of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin uh, Wall, uh, the reunification of Germany. Uh, and also launch of uh, uh, the peace process uh, uh, with the Oslo Accords. And uh, at the time, both shores of the Mediterranean felt the need uh, to uh, launch uh, a dynamic process of enhanced cooperation between uh, uh, Europe uh, and its southern neighborhood, if I may say so. Uh, that process was launched, uh, structured. It had uh, well-set goals on, uh, uh, in terms of economic, uh, social, uh, uh, political uh, uh, dialogue. Uh, and it evolved uh, uh, into uh, the uh, Euromed uh, framework of cooperation run by uh, the uh, European Union. Uh, and achieved a lot, we have to say. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, every process needs to evolve and needs to uh, uh, take into account uh, 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 new development and also take into account some of the structural issue that faced that process in terms of the governance because it was at a certain point perceived maybe as, as a north to south uh, uh, donor recipient. Uh, to type of, 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 of relationship. Uh, so, uh, uh, and also the regional setting have changed. The peace process, as usual, unfortunately, have, have, uh, have, have faced uh, numerous uh, setbacks. Uh, and in parallel, uh, uh, we had uh, the, 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 the invasion of Iraq and then uh, followed by uh, the Sorry, I'm sorry, the, the invasion of, uh, of Iraq by the U.S., which had uh, geostrategic uh, consequences. So in 2008, when, when the French uh, presidency of the EU came with the idea of relaunching, because we have to call the UFM, it was a way of relaunching the, the, the Euro-Mediterranean. And actually, the summit, the, the Paris summit, was called the Barcelona Process uh, Union for the Mediterranean. So, so Barcelona was at the center, Barcelona as a process what uh, was at the center of the Paris summit was in a way uh, 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 redefining uh, the relation. And uh, uh, if I want to give two uh, major uh, uh, novelty, if I may say so, uh, uh, is the governance structure. So the idea of co-ownership uh, 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 a, a relationship on equal footing between the northern shore of the Mediterranean and the southern shore uh, uh, was at the heart, at the center of, 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 uh, in, uh, of those uh, heads of state of go and government who met in Paris in November, uh, in, uh, in July uh, 2008. And also the idea at the time was uh, of a project-oriented uh, uh, organization uh, one that could make uh, a difference uh, uh, in, uh, in the life of the citizen. So, so we are Barcelona, we are the evolution of that process uh, uh, with a vision of, 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 of making it uh, closer to the uh, uh, average citizen, but also uh, with a vision of making it uh, uh, a balanced relation uh, between the two shores uh, where uh, uh, decision is made by consensus and made uh, 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 even even our presidency is is, is, is a co-presidency and right now it started with an Egyptian uh, French presidency and today it is a Jordanian uh, 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 European Union uh, presidency 
even this co-presidency is a testimony to our unique uh, governance uh, structure. Yes, let me, let me uh, ask, uh, because you were there in Paris yes. as an Egyptian ambassador uh, at that time, uh, so you were a witness of it. Uh, has your idea on the UFM uh, changed uh, now that you have become the Secretary General? Uh, because uh, I must admit that in myself, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Antonio Lopez was here, uh, we were seeing it from Madrid uh, because I succeeded him at the, at the, at the as Director General of and Pedro with, uh, was there with us mm -hmm. uh, following the Arab world affairs. Uh, but you were there in Paris uh, witnessing, uh, we were there in, uh, b before, in, in, 19, in 2008 you were uh, witnessing the way the President Sarkozy mm -hmm. developed it with uh, some of his... Uh, do you think that the governance that uh, has helped I mean, uh, now you have an instrument which I think has changed everything, which is the ministerial meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my view, it is not true that uh, it is only uh, a project of projects. No. I think that through the ministerials, which are Union for the Mediterranean ministerials, you are somehow at the center of the development of uh, 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 projects and policies. It is a way to, to agree on policies of uh, common action, of integration, etc. How do you think the Union for the Mediterranean itself has evolved and has changed? Mm -hmm. From the first approach uh, in 2008, when it was launched by President Sarkozy, and what do you have seen now when arriving uh, uh, to the Secretary, as Secretary General? Very good question, actually, and very important question. Uh, uh, well, uh, as you rightly said, so, I mean, uh, it was conceived in the beginning as the project of projects. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, with time and with, 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 with the reality on the ground, uh, well, the, the project dimension remained, of course, but we became the institutional face of the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation. And that in itself is, is, is very important. Not uh, to minimize also our, do, our role as, as a dialogue platform and our role in, 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 in feeding the policy dialogue. So we are, we are the institutional uh, 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 dimension of the relation between the two shores in terms of our ministerial, as you rightly said, so so when it comes to trade, it's through our uh, uh, trade minister uh, meeting. Uh, when it comes to uh, education, it's the same thing with with minister in charge of education and environment, and you name it. I mean, in the six uh, main division under which uh, we work, climate change, uh, environment. Uh, uh, trade, infrastructure, and others, but also we became also uh, 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 the meeting point, uh, the consensus building uh, uh, platform uh, that we are uh, 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 a, a, a place where also the stakeholders, and one of those stakeholders is think tanks, mm -hmm. the one that you beautifully represent, which is EMED, and the 106, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. Uh, all over the Mediterranean. This is part of our ecosystem. Uh, we, 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 we don't only work through our ministerial and through intergovernmental structures. We are actually mm, extremely engaged with the civil society and with the stakeholders. And by stakeholder, government officials are part of, are one part of the stakeholder community, but also business people, uh, NGOs, uh, association, think tanks, uh, university, you name it, uh, scientific. So, 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 so in a sense, we became the face of this larger and deeper dialogue about uh, trying to define a common agenda, trying to enhance the goal of regional integration. Uh, uh, sometimes we succeed, sometimes 
uh, our success is more limited due to, to various reasons. But I think throughout the years, and despite some of the challenges, we can come to it later, uh, uh, we have developed a, a, a pragmatic, uh, a, a realistic approach uh, of pushing uh, uh, a necessity, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is uh, bringing these two sh shores closer together in every walk of life, in all the, uh, the, the, the sector uh, uh, of interest uh, that we work on. This is, uh, yes. Uh, I don't know if I made I've myself clear I, I, I was reading uh, this morning a bit of uh, your last uh, reports, uh, and uh, once more I've, I was impressed uh, with the evolution of the tasks that's taken over the Secretariat of the Union for the Mediterranean. So, uh, to summarize for people who may not be uh, uh, may not know in detail what you are doing every day, which are the, the main uh, sectors. sectors of activity, which are the main, uh, or the main objectives and the sectors of activity yes. of... of uh, well, we, we have six huge chapeau, uh, uh, general theme, uh, and under each one of them uh, sub... Uh, uh, sectors, but uh, the big ones, uh, I mean, the big, the big where we have Deputy Secretary General in charge of them, one is business development, and with that come trades, digital economy, employment, uh, you name it. Uh, we have environment and environment. I mean, we all know how important uh, that is. We have, wa and with environment, we have water, and of course, we are dealing with one of the, unfortunately, poorest region in the world in terms of water resource, and that does not, or is not limited to the south of the Mediterranean, actually even today in the northern Mediterranean, especially along uh, the Mediterranean uh, shores, we have, we have issues. Uh, and with that comes lots of, 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 of sectors like the blue economy, which is now one of the most important uh, uh, area on which we work. We have uh, uh, a division on uh, uh, climate change. Uh, we like to consider ourselves as the local chapter of the COP24, uh, and we are, in a sense, uh, in terms of adaptability mitigation, because at the end of the day, climate change uh, is uh, unfortunately a reality, is no longer a scenario uh, 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 under which uh, we strive to help our member state adapt and mitigate the negative effect uh, of that. Uh, and with that, we have, of course, uh, 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 with climate change, uh, and we have, of course, uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, transport, and urban development. Uh, and we have, uh, 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 and I can talk uh, for hours about, about those three uh, uh, this is one division, and we have, of course, education uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, research, scientific research, and uh, the very, very important and relevant uh, division on social and civil affairs, under which we work on women empowerment, uh, 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 gender uh, issue, and also uh, uh, youth uh, 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 in all its aspects, uh, and youth in our, uh, in our organization is handled by so many, even environment and youth, uh, 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 climate change and youth, but also in business development, we have uh, a, a huge, uh, uh, we, we do a lot in terms of youth employment and youth employability in a region known by, by, by this famous now uh, expression, needs neither in education or in uh, training or in mm -hmm. uh, so 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 we deal with that 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 in a in a very simplified uh, superficial way uh, the sixth uh, division on which we work and all of this we have uh, a methodology we can get into it starting from the ministerial to the platform to the projects we can get into that discussion later Yes, because uh, it might seem uh, too impressing uh, such a wide range of uh, activities and 
this is why I think that uh, what you are saying now, explaining the methodology is extremely important. Because uh, I think that, uh, uh, I must admit I was extremely critical of uh, the Union for the Mediterranean in the first years because uh, it, it, try, it was trying to, to implement some projects, singular uh, projects, with no real uh, uh, network of, of uh, conceptual framework, etc. Uh, I think what is interesting now is that this methodology you were referring to, uh, because the final goal is, of course, cooperation in the Mediterranean to overcome uh, differences between North and South uh, through this, this uh, cooperation uh, between uh, the different peoples in the North of the South and through somehow some sort of, of integration uh, in different areas, uh, commercial, etc., etc. No? But the interesting thing uh, is that I have uh, seen this evolution in the sense that before, when it was created, quite frankly, uh, the people in Brussels, they thought that there was something that they were managing directly from Brussels because the, it was, it was a, in fact, the whole of the Barcelona process was a project of the European Union, a cooperation for development project, very big, uh, with the countries in south and east of the Mediterranean. And now you have this thing which is a co-ownership, because you have a co-presidency, is an in the secretariat uh, uh, is there uh, to promote the activity and has become uh, the secretariat of the whole big process of the Union for the Mediterranean, which means that you have become a platform where the European institutions plus the member states in the European Union plus all associate countries south and east of the Mediterranean meet together and agree on policies. And this is the extremely crucial role, in my view, of the ministerials. Because uh, I was, I was this, uh, this morning reading the array of uh, uh, ministerial meetings of the Union for the Mediterranean, where all ministers north of the European Union and south and east of the Mediterranean are plus the European institutions, plus the Arab League, uh, and you as the Secretary General of all this business, uh, and uh, being the only one being in all formats of the ministerial meetings, because the ministers of agriculture are only in the ministerial UFM of agriculture, or the ministers of industry are only in the ministerial meeting for industry, but you are in all of them. So you've become somehow the axis of the whole action that may be taken uh, in, in, uh, in ministerial, uh, uh, at ministerial level, north and south of Mediterranean, with the European institutions. Uh, how does this then relate, how from there uh, you achieve to promote policies and, and promote projects. Uh, how is this then this methodology developed? Thank you. I think uh, very important also, I mean, all your questions are on target and uh, <laughs> quite difficult, I have to say. Uh, well, uh, I, would, I would look at uh, to ministerial as, 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 as actually the tip of the iceberg. And that's not uh, in any way or sense to, 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 to downplay their importance, but they are the uh, uh, result or the uh, crown uh, uh, or uh, the crowning of, 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 of uh, 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 strenuous work uh, done by, by the Secretariat on one side and also the member states uh, uh, as such. Because for the UFM to be able uh, to, to, with the co-presidency to, to call for a ministerial, you need uh, uh, to have a consensus uh, on the subject matter. Uh, whatever the subject matter is, higher education, uh, industry, infrastructure, trade, you name it. Uh, but before that, there is so much that needs to be done. One is, as I said, uh, 
uh, in, in the beginning of my in our, of our discussion is 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 building consensus within the community of stakeholders. Uh, take any subject matter. Uh, let's say women. I'll give you women as an example. Uh, uh, the woman agenda. And the woman agenda is is crucial. So so when we when we get uh, uh, the, the the stakeholders in terms of. Uh, National Council of Women in, in certain countries, ministries of women, when we get uh, uh, NGO working on, on, on gender issue, working on women empowerment, uh, within uh, uh, what we call the first P, uh, 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 dialogue platforms. And then, and then we have, once there is an understanding and we see the beginning of a consensus being built around actions and about a plan uh, to move ahead, then we move into the political level, which is, as you uh, rightly said, so uh, holding a ministerial. In, uh, uh, and in the women's sector per se, the ministerial was uh, uh, extremely successful where the 43 member states came together and decided on a, on a common strategy, but not only a common strategy, on defining common indicators and a peer review system, a peer review system where each of our country will report to the 42 others about how far they're going in implementing uh, 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 a progressive uh, a policy and without no policy difference whatsoever because the South and the North are in complete sync, if I may say so, when it comes uh, to what needs to be done to empower women in our society, to give them a role in, the, in our economic uh, sphere, uh, to ensure equality uh, between women uh, uh, and, and men. Uh, moreover, on the very important role of women in combating extremism, violence, and stereotyping, and everything, including Islamophobia and others. So once we have reached that, that understanding at the ministerial level, we go into our third P. This is the political dialogue, is the, which is the projects. Uh, and we are, and we do have a number of projects, I, if I'm not mistaken, but don't, quote, uh, don't hold me accountable, I'm, not, I'm bad with numbers. I think we have nine different projects in that area which are benefiting more than 50,000 women uh, in the region. Uh, 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 and we work uh, uh, hand in hand with the whole, uh, as I said, we consider ourselves the local uh, chapter of the uh, COP24. We are also the local chapter of UN Women, the local chapter of so many of uh, 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 national uh, development agency. So on women, we're working with CEDA, which is the Swedish development agency, who are financing our activity, our events, our platforms uh, in, 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 in promoting the woman agenda or a woman agenda, uh, call it as, as, as you may want to, uh, in, in, in the whole uh, Euro-Med region. And by the way, our women agenda is not a North-South agenda. It is a pan-Euro-Mediterranean agenda, where we are actually, we have noticed that there is also a lot to do on this side of the Mediterranean as much as we have to do things on the other side of the Mediterranean. Uh, where Spain has to do, Italy has to do, France has to do, and other has to do. So we implement it together, uh, and we advance together towards a coherent uh, women policy on women and gender. Uh, but that's only one example. I can take you, uh, I can walk you through the six or seven or eight different uh, big uh, agenda items uh, uh, that we work, and the methodology will remain the same will it remain exactly the same. Yeah? Uh, uh, we're having an employment ministerial in, 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 in less than four or five weeks in, in, in Qashqais, uh, Lisbon. Uh, uh, I happen to have served me and Omar, the Egyptian ambassador, in that uh, beautiful city on employment. But I'm not going to bore you with the details. No, no, no. Huh? no, no it's Let's extremely interesting the second, because, yeah. because it's, a very, it's a very complex methodology that's yielding results. So. The first, you have to build consensus among the stakeholders at the grassroots level with the organizations for women, uh, other institutions, research institutes, etc., on 
each of the issues. Then you raise this consensus to the ministerial level and a, a consensus has to be reached among governments and uh, the, the financing institutions, so the, uh, the European Commission, the European Bank, or the African Development Bank, etc. And then with this, you go to the projects, which is uh, uh, a lot of consensus to and be the reached. Implementation of, of, and the implementation of policy dialogue also. Of, uh, the of policy policy. dialogue to create these projects. But this is a lot of consensus. Uh, uh, let me ask another question before giving the floor, because uh, uh, the people may, may put some other questions too. Uh, we've gone through such big problems, geopolitical, I would say, problems in the Mediterranean area, that it's incredible to see some people who are uh, capable to engage in building such enormous consensus. Uh, I remember in the first period of the Barcelona process, we, we were confronted all the time that, well, uh, there, were, there was the Middle East uh, uh, conflict or uh, whatever that uh, made it impossible even the meeting of the, uh, any ministerial. Uh, and then came all these geopolitical, let me call it so because it is the least I could say disasters. Uh, in 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 uh, Iraq, uh, when Afghanistan, uh, Iraq nowadays, this incredible war in in, in Syria, the the, 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 the uh, developments in Libya, etc. How these uh, geopolitical developments impact on this uh, uh, building of uh, Euro-Mediterranean consensus uh, to 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 make something better? our societies and our uh, cooperation. How does the geopolitical events impact on this in, in these recent years or now? Well, uh, extremely, uh, I do agree with you 100% on the fact that geopolitical condition, actually when I first explained the Barcelona process, it was against the backdrop of, of geopolitical development. So, so, and in reality, the UFM or the Union for Mediterranean was really operational in 2010. It was launched in 2008, but it took two years uh, to build uh, the, the institutional framework, which is the Secretariat. So we came into life uh, 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 while uh, a few months later we had the Arab so-called, and, and uh, the so-called Arab Spring, uh, 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 with all its uh, uh, geopolitical uh, uh, and disastrous effect in certain of our countries uh, in, uh, in the region, and of course, uh, uh, some of, of the country of the region suffered and some uh, didn't and actually recovered, uh, like uh, the case of, of Egypt and Tunisia, of course. But uh, uh, we came also to life while Europe was facing a dire economic crisis, uh, the most important crisis since the Second World War uh, in 2008. So Europe also was, was dealing with its own lot of problems. Has it affected? It did. But I have to give credit to my predecessor, and especially my immediate predecessor, uh, who uh, uh, had a methodology uh, and, uh, and had a pragmatic approach and worked on subject and sector where he knew that member states had an interest in advancing a regional agenda regarding them, uh, and, and where consensus was made. And member states, even during these difficult years in geostrategic terms, had the wisdom of putting aside some, because you are a very unique organization. We have countries that do not agree with each other bilaterally, eh? without naming names. But actually, when it comes to the regional agenda, eh? uh, to my surprise, in the last six months, I see that those countries prefer to leave their own bilateral difference uh, outside of the meeting room and agree on the broader picture eh? when it comes to as I said, women, trade, employment, uh, 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 environment. I keep uh, pointing to my Deputy Secretary General when I say environment because he overworked me on that subject. He is in charge of it and others. So, so, so this is the beauty of it. And then the last, and I will finish with that because I know I talk too much, mm -hmm. is that the last three years uh, we have seen an improvement in the Jewish political. I, I mentioned Tunisia as a country who has recovered uh, from the effect uh, of, of the turbulence of Egypt, 
of course, uh, my home country is, is, is back. And other, Morocco and Algeria countries, yes, Syria is still with us, Libya is still with us, but the rest of the southern Mediterranean, except for Syria and Libya, are growing at a very robust pace. The, I think the average in the region is 3.5%. Europe is also has recovered from its own financial and economic crisis. There is an economic necessity for enhanced cooperation, and would, we cannot have enhanced cooperation if you do not harmonize your policy in so many areas. And this is where the institutional framework called the UFM uh, uh, is made for uh, and adapted to uh, and is helping achieve uh, the goal of creating, as we said in Paris, an area of peace, security, and prosperity in the Euro Mediterranean space. Very good. Let me uh, put a, a final question before uh, giving the floor for questions uh, uh, from the audience. Uh, here will be, they will have, I'm sure, better questions than mine. Uh, and better answers <laughs> than mine. <laughs> uh, people are worried in Europe about some problems that uh, may be not true, uh, because, for example, uh, the, the government that's more uh, uh, worried about uh, immigration is probably Hungary. There are no immigrants in Hungary. Uh, 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 a few thousand. <laughs> a few thousand. Well, it's nothing. Uh, but how do you uh, 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 see what can the Union for the Mediterranean do in, this, in these uh, uh, terms? Yeah. Are you doing uh, something? Because uh, is there a migration dialogue or cooperation in the region? Uh, how, how can this, even this complicated picture, fit into the general framework of, of uh, the Union for the Mediterranean? Well, that's definitely your most difficult question. Uh, and it is also one of the most difficult issues facing the region, uh, uh, not in terms of reality, in terms of perception. Uh, because if there is a, a problem of migration, it's more on the southern Mediterranean shore than it is on the northern Mediterranean shore. If we compare the numbers, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, uh, Europe, I, I don't want to venture into, into quoting a number, and I see a camera here, uh, recording, but I don't think the number uh, uh, is more than three, two to three million. I, I'm, 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 the I'm, refugees from... Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, from yes, the, yes. Uh, 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 and you are the expert in the matter, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the number in the southern Mediterranean shore of, uh, of, of refugee settling, or not settling, uh, uh, staying in, in Syria, uh, uh, in uh, Lebanon, in Jordan, in Egypt, in, 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 in so many of our countries, in Algeria and Tunisia, when it comes to our Libyan uh, uh, brother and sisters, uh, 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 is staggering. But the perception in Europe is that the, the, the problem is more uh, a, a, an EU, uh, EU problem than it is a southern uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, issue. So there is an issue of perception. Also, uh, uh, the perception, uh, should we deal with migration uh, from a management uh, point of view, uh, meaning uh, uh, policies and, and, and resources uh, to, 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 to deal and to stop the flow, or should we deal with the root causes of migration, which are man-made, unfortunately, talking about conflicts, civil wars, uh, and what have you, uh, uh, and also climate change, because now the brunt of the problem is more a, a sub-Saharan African problem than it is a problem of migration from the southern shore of the Mediterranean. It, uh, and also all the way from Ag Afghanistan, uh, coming down uh, that three uh, famous roads. What the UFM is doing, because I don't want to be long, well, we are more into, because of the policy, I'm being very honest here, and very undiplomatic because of the policy difference that exists among our member states. You give, uh, you quoted one of our member states in that matter. So we're more on the root causes uh, and more on uh, 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 the mitigating the effect of climate change 
uh, on, 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 on minimizing the risk, uh, on creating uh, jobs than we are on managing uh, or on the management side of that uh, phenomenon. For political reason and for practical reason, because we do not want to get into that debate. So migration is one, and uh, uh, during uh, our last ministerial, even before that, in the roadmap that our foreign minister have adopted, we have decided that migration would be one of the axes on which we work. But the angle of our approach to that uh, uh, axis is one of root causes, one of human and sustainable development, and not one of management. This is uh, interesting because, uh, well, there are other uh, tools to deal with that in to, to manage or to try to manage uh, migration flows. The problem is that we have now the addition of the economic migration these days fundamentally from sub-Sahara Africa added to the flux of refugees and climate change, and climate change uh, which causes it with the refugees fleeing from wars and another gradual disaster from other countries. And you are absolutely true that the main burden uh, of these is, is by the country south and east of the Mediterranean. As you very rightly pointed, uh, any of these countries, Jordania, Lebanon, etc., is having as much refugees for a small country as, as Jordania as the whole of the European Union refugees from yeah, all conflicts in the, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, maybe in the audience, uh, you, you can interrupt. 